Up From Work podcast. My name is Dave Swillam. Let's get ready to hustle. Hey, and welcome back to the Waking Up From Work podcast. This is your host, Dave Swillam, and you're listening to episode 100. I don't know how that sounded on there, and I uh, feel really bad because it's really late at night when I'm shooting this, like the night before, but I'm really excited to have you guys here and to be here. First of all, thank you to everyone out there who has hung out since day one. I was not good at podcasting when this started out, and it was a little rough to begin with when I got my flow there. But thank you so much to everyone that has hung out with me for two years and stuck around for me to create this, been a part of it, engaged with me, talked with me on here, talked on social, given me guests, everything that's been happening. Thank you so much for being around for two years and listening to these episodes and being a part of this with me. And thank you all new people coming in. Maybe this is your first episode is episode with 100 when I'm yelling that at the beginning of it. I do act that way. So sorry, but maybe this isn't for you. But uh, thank you anyone that's new and anyone that stuck around to allow me the opportunity to have this podcast, meet people, share what's happening and, and just form and be a part of an amazing community. So I appreciate all of you so much for giving the ability to be here. On the show today, this is a very different show, purposely so, to mix it up from the other episodes that we've had leading to this point. So on this show, you've probably been hearing, I have asked on almost every episode, early in, I didn't kind of form that I wanted that yet. So on almost every episode, I ask the guests five questions at the end. And one in particular is really important to this show's concept and idea which is why do you wake up every single day and do what you do instead of any other thing that you could possibly do in the world? And I frame this out a bunch of different ways. I have missed some episodes on here because of issues of audio or losing a file or something, or I don't even know, maybe not asking it right, or there's a lot of different things in here. But I do have over 40 answers on this show to that question. And I wanted to compile them all together so you could really hear a range of reasons why people are going after what they're trying to do or they're doing right now full time. Because I think that it's different for every person, but also you do see a lot of similarities. And when they're back to back like this, it's, it's really interesting to see and hear all these different backgrounds without the full context of just those answers piled up. So Today is a big mashup of a bunch of answers, over 40 answers to that one question. And I'll answer at the end of this too, myself, which I am kind of scared to share, but I don't think I can add up to all these awesome guests, but check it out. Listen to what they have to say. I hope that you have a reason either why you do or why you don't wake up every day and do what you do. Maybe You're in a spot where you love what you're doing and you wake up to continue that. Maybe you're not happy with where you're at and and this question really challenges you and I hope that it does and it it drives you to do something about it. Or maybe you are working on it right now and, and, and you're trying to get there or whatever it may be. I think that I want to obviously see everyone have a reason that they wake up every day because this is a positive show overall even though we get a little blunt sometimes. But at the end of the day, I asked this question because I am really felt my own kind of awakening going after what I want to do in a zero bullshit way not too, too long ago. And I really hope that this show either helps inspire people to do that same thing or if they're in the middle of it, have some comfort that other people are doing the same or if you're on the other side of it, have some comfort that people are still working on it and uh, could be mentored by you or that you still have things that you can do out there. But end of the day, here's a lot of awesome answers to a crazy, crazy hard question. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for being part of the show. What made you make the decision to pursue freelance music in a serious way? What was it that like clicked 
Like for me, something happened and I was like, yeah, everything in my entire life will be in alignment to making this happen. Like literally next day, I was like, everything I'm doing will be with that. What happened that like this, this is what I want. Fr- frankly, it, it straight up. I saw other people doing it and I know this might sound like egotistical, but I knew I could do it better. Like no, I, I, straight, I straight up knew I could do it better. So I couldn't. If he can I do it. If yeah. he can, I, I couldn't oh, not Jeff do it. Jeff over there, dude. This guy's like, making, I'm not letting this, this guy's guy. making money off this right <laughs> yeah, now. This what guy's getting doing? the gig. He sucks. <laughs> like, no. I mean, straight up. I just, I just. That's where I was coming from. Like, I can do this way better. And yeah. What is it that made you kind of take the leap and pursue what you wanted in a real way, where where you're, everything that you're doing is aligning and getting that to a fruition instead of what you know the other things that you're working on before that basically what what happened to do that um i can attribute i would say for me personally the thing that always seems to bring meaning and direction to my life is god um it's been you know i find myself a spiritual person and um throughout my life i i think because i've had moments where I felt very secluded to who I was. I, I really did a lot of listening to, you know, the universe and I've always been pointed in the right direction when I find myself really sitting with it. I don't think there's a single time that I can think of where something significant happened that I could not attribute to, um, some kind of higher working, life force or energy or miraculous fate spirit that has been with me along that journey. What made you make the decision to pursue, you know, starting your business or, or creating this world in a serious way where now it's not like, Oh yeah, I have this thing going on. It's like, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. This is me. Like, this is a big part of me. This yeah. is a direct thing that I work on daily. Um, honestly, the, like, I think I was also talking about it beforehand is marketing, honestly, is the backbone to anything. It, whether it be a, like, whether it be a band, whether it be a brand, whether it be a business, if you're not marketing yourself correctly and marketing, you know, to the right people, trying to expand your market, right? Like, everything boils down to it. everything like, so I just kind of base everything that I do around that and trying to better that. Because if you're like, if you're not marketing yourself, like no one's going to know who you are. Everything <laughs> is selling mm-hmm. dude. Exactly. You're either selling or you're being sold. Yes. That's life. that, that, that is it right there. When you walk out the Which door, it sounds yeah. like shitty, but at the same time, it's like, is it, is it really like that bad? I'm kind of thinking about altering this one because I feel like it just comes out through conversation every time. Yeah. But I guess like, let's boil it down to like the skinny, like give me those deets, bro. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> what made yeah. you choose to pursue this in a serious way where it's not like the, like, yeah, I'm working to be a per it's like, I will be this yeah. no longer. Will I be this? This is yeah. it done. What made you choose to do that? Damn. That's nice. That's a good question. (laughs) Um, I think what it was, was the, the, like kind of circling back to the beginning of our conversation on the podcast was like, I I started enjoying helping other people. Like I wanted to get into law enforcement originally because I wanted to help people. Like that was, I remember I had a few interviews at a couple of police departments. They're like, why do you want to, why law enforcement? It's a high stress environment. It's, you know, th- th- there's, there's so many like statistics to law enforcement that are just negative. And it was like, I don't know. I just want to help people, you know, like, like I, I've, I've dealt with, you know, alcoholism in my family and, and drug addiction. And, you know, I, I just like, I feel like I could help people in that way and support others. And, and, but then it spiraled into, I just, with the working out thing. And I just, I loved it. I loved helping people. And then, like I said, like, I was like, I can get paid to do this. And it was rewarding. You know how good it feels when somebody loses 
when a woman who has been struggling with their weight and loses 20 to 30 pounds and then is just like so thankful beyond words that, you know what I mean? It, it almost brings me to tears. I had a, a client the other day tell me he's 62 years old and he's like, I never would have thought I would be able to do any of the stuff that you've gotten me to do. Like he was getting choked up and I was about to cry. Like, and it yeah. was like the most rewarding feeling ever. So I asked the line. same five questions to everyone, Corey. Oh, I'm ready. But we got to go through them kind of because we I can really be like, go. this is a round. long ass episode. This is like a huge thing. All right. What Speed made round. you make the decision to pursue this in a serious way? Uh, be that it's a hobby of mine and I figured that I can do it better than everybody else and make money doing it. And if it brings a pleasure to everybody else, I want to do that. I want to be an entertainer and I like other, making other people enjoy something. So. What made you guys like for Nourish or what you're doing right now in, in, in general, what made you pursue this in a serious way? Like what made it be that one thing, George, that you were saying, like, I try to align everything with this thing. What made that be the thing? This, need, this the needs to happen moment. This has to be a thing. Um, for me, I feel like it's, it's service you giving something to other people. For me, I've always been that kind of person that wants to give things to people. Um, but having that ability to use a skill and just make people's lives better, mm -hmm. um, I feel like is irreplaceable. And it's like, why wouldn't you do it? Mm -hmm. Fair. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, um, Something I once heard by this guy, Neil Donald Walsh, he wrote this book called Conversations with God. Um, I actually said this on the last podcast that I was on. You know, he said, life has nothing to do with you. You know, have you ever heard that phrase? Like, um, nobody comes into your life without a gift for you in their hand. He said it's actually backwards. You don't come into anybody's life without a gift for them in your hand. Mm -hmm. You know, and going back to that word dharma, um, it means purpose in life. And so like they say that like your Dharma is those things that when you, you do them, time stands still, you know, a lot of people when they're in the kitchen, it's a burden when Sydney's in the kitchen, like time stands still for her. Yeah. And so when I'm teaching meditation and yoga and sharing these tools that have transformed my own life, like time, it doesn't feel like work. Like well, technically yeah. we own, you know, I have my business where I'm doing my meditation course and also teaching yoga on top of nourish and we're doing nourish and we're working our nine to five, but honestly only one, the nine to five feels like a job. The rest of them, you know, uh, we're doing what we love. So it doesn't feel like we work a day in our life. Mm -hmm. And so they say like, find those things that you love to do, figure out how you can use those to be a service to others. And then you're in your Dharma because time will stand still when you're doing those things. And, what's better than being able to do what you love and help other people while doing it? What, like, like you went to school for it. You're doing it 15, 20 hours on top of working full time. Like you're hustling, dude. What made you pursue what you're doing right now in a way that you're like, I really need to do this. Like this needs to be the thing that I do. So I'm going to go back to high school. So this is going to be very, very grim. So I apologize in advance. I'm not worried about it. So my birthday was like about a week ago. So, before my 15th birthday, my dad went out for a run and he ended up getting hit by a car. Oh, geez. So, and it was one of those things where throughout the day we're like, we didn't have cell phones. So my mom was like, oh, he got by a car. I'm like, but his car's in the driveway. And like, no, he was running, got struck by a car. And so like, he went through like rehab, he went through surgeries and like, he's fine now. He's completely fine. But there was like good, six months. Dude, I'm sitting here like, I'm good. Yeah, dude, I just got fucking whacked. No, no, it's, I'm like, I'm sure to say that because I, sometimes I tell a story like, is he fine? Like, oh yeah, he's totally fine. Now he's walking. He's okay. I want to preface it with he's not dead. He, oh, Jesus. He's alive so, and kicking. But, okay, thank God. But um, no, it was just like, there were a lot of times where my, I'm the youngest of my family. My brothers were in college and on their own. So like, there are months where I'm like, okay, how do I deal with this? So like, I come home, there wouldn't be really be anyone around. So like, and this is like 2007. So like, there is a point where I'm like, it was a late at night. We had Netflix where like, we get the DVD sent to us and not like we're just streaming now. And it's like late at night, I really want to see Spider-Man 3. And I'm like, I, I just got to draw something. And like, I found a picture of Sam and I drew it late at night. I went to bed. I woke up. I'm like, hey, that's not half bad. So oh. I drew like drew all the villains, like Green Goblin, Shocker, Venom. And like, I drew like Family Guy characters, all this stuff. And I showed my, my dad when he got home, my family. They're like, wow, I 
I mean, I always kind of drew when I was growing up, but like, I really didn't like did it to that capacity. And I'm right. like, I look back, they're all terrible, but you know, um, start but, somewhere. Yeah. It's one of those things where I like, I'm like, it just felt so good. Like I felt calmer. Like I tried working out, I tried doing yard work and like focusing on school more, like nothing made me feel better. And like, that made me feel so much better. Like, just like, I felt mentally, like not even physically, but like mentally at ease. Or what is it that, that made you pursue your passion in, in a way that got you to where you think you are at now? What changed? What changed? Uh, what changed was I realized the person who was stopping me was me. Okay. <laughs> I, I again, back to waiting for circumstances to change, people to change, you know, things to change. And when I had this, I was in a coaching group and when I had this epiphany, we were supposed to share what was stopping us from doing what we said we wanted to do. And I'm like, oh my God, the only one stopping me is me. I mean, (laughs) really, truly. And so when that changed for me, again, I started looking at everything else differently. So I started figuring out how I could do it instead of figuring out how I couldn't do it. I, I started to figure out how I couldn't create the time, make the time, however you want to look at it, to write this book that I've been talking about for years. People told me that I should write. Once I started, and this happens so often, but once I started, then I was authentic to myself. And because I was authentic to myself, then I wanted to do more of that. And that's just led, you know, to from there on. But the first thing was, to recognize that it was it was me and I can change me. I always ask the same questions. Mm-hmm. You've listened before, mm-hmm. so you know mm-hmm. what's coming your way. I forget them now that I'm sitting what here. What made you pursue this? I'm bringing it back, dude. I know I cut it. Bringing it back. What made you pursue this passion in like an all-in serious way? Like what made, like I need to be a veterinarian. Like what made it so like if that's what has to happen? Hundred percent. The day I job shadowed at Plymouth Animal Hospital, and like I said, I worked a nine-hour day, and was disappointed that I had to go home. I yeah. wanted to work longer, and I was sad that I needed that I wasn't gonna be coming back soon, and I had to rearrange my schedule to come back. Oh, shit, I can't be here every day. Oh, shit, yeah. Damn. I have to go to class now. I don't want to go to class. I want to stay here. I learned so much here. I want to just stay here and learn. That's very that was real. the day that I decided. What made you pursue, you know, being an audio engineer, being in the kind of video AV presentation space for music? What what made you pursue this as your passion versus finishing your electric engineer degree or, you know, doing some other job? What made you pursue this with passion? Like, why is this the thing that you have to do? Okay, the short answer is because listening to music was the thing it is the thing that I enjoy the most. And also like movies. I also love to watch movies and, you know, consume the director thoughts and all the cameras. So it was like the teenager who grew up consuming all this stuff and like really enjoying my best moments was I'm alone. I'm with my headphones. I'm watching a movie. Oh yeah. That's what I love to do. So. So now you create. Uh, Yes, and that's exactly it. I had this feeling like, man, how 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 are people doing this to me? Like, I was like getting chills. I was like getting angry. I was like getting all these emotions. And I wanted to figure out how to generate that. That's why I got into music production. I like playing you know, only the guitar. I wanted to love, okay, how make a good bass, how to make like these drums. I wanted to yeah. really understand how people could make me feel like that. I was like, oh, man, I have a great time. I wanted to know how to make this. Okay, so what made you guys pursue Horizon Active or creating a clothing brand as something that's like a passion for you that like it's so much time, it's so much effort, so much money to do something like this. There always has to be a reason why you feel like you have to do it to create something like this. What made you pursue this thing with this much passion? Okay. There's a, there's a lot there, but, um, (laughs) for sure. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, 
I've always been into creating things, right? Like music, graphic arts, like always drawing, you know, Dragon Ball Z guys in like seventh grade, like whatever. Maybe it was a little later than that. I don't remember, but <laughs> the point is I was always into creating things. And at first getting into this industry, wasn't really sure like what it was going to be like. And then I saw the creative potential in there and I realized that like I can apply that creative mindset to this industry in a yes. lot of different ways, like through the marketing, through the photography, through the designs. And it like just started like hitting all these parts of my brain that like those other things I, you know, still do today is like hobbies or just whatever. And it was awesome. And I was like, wait, and this is also a business at the same time. Like I'm not just doing this. Yeah. Just to do this. So it kind of opened up this door that I had not really seen before. Like before I just did stuff because I liked it. Now I do stuff because I'm going to grow it and, you know, make money through it. And I like it. Like that's awesome. Like you can have all of that. (laughs) And then on top of it, you know, to speak to like your audience and I guess the title of the podcast, you know, like no matter what job you get, you're not going to be able, like, you're not going to be able to do like all the things that you might want to do, you know, at that job. Like even if you got a job in marketing, like you're, you're not going to have full control over every single thing in the company that you may want to have control over. Like maybe you want to take the photos, maybe you want to do the audio, but then they are like, no, the audio guy does that. And you're like, yeah, but I want to do it this way. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of bureaucracy and like moving parts in a company and it creates limitations. When you do your own thing, the blinders, the limitations are gone. And is it puts a lot of responsibility on you, but it's also like completely awesome because you're part of everything. And you're not going to get that in a job. I just don't think it's possible. So I always ask someone, what made you pursue this as your career or your passion? Like what made it so that you're like, you know, of all the things that are happening in the world, this is the thing that I need to do. Yeah, I'm just obsessed with it. Obsessed with audio, obsessed with music. I, I just, I didn't really have a choice, you know. I, I go to bed at night thinking about, you know, how I'm going to, how I'm going to mic up this band tomorrow I, or how I'm going to finish up that mix. What if I, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just life. What made you kind of decide that this was your path or, or pursue what you did? as your choice for what you did with your life? Like what made you go this path? You think what led to it? The first thing that, I mean, there are so many answers to this, but the first answer that came in my heart is my family. And that's why I said, you know, um, surround yourself with the good, good people, whoever, if it's your family, your friends, but that's very important because I had dreams. I had aspirations. I had all of it. But without, you know, my family, uh, in this case, also my husband really supporting me. I had so many days that I'm like, I'm tired, you know, and they really yeah. taught me. I, I always say it, sometimes you're tired. You just have to rest, not to give up, which is a very, sure. very big difference, you know, completely different things. Resting's a day. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Day of football. Absolutely. Giving up is a uh, absolutely total different and issue. Yeah. I want everyone to really listen to this phrase so many times, learn how to rest, not to give up. It's so important because we all have those days that we just like, ah, I can take it. That's it. I'm giving up. And that's why you need, you know, and if, so to me again, it was my family it was my, you know, my husband, but find your network. It could also be a good book. It could be a song. It could be something sure. that, but the only thing that I'm telling you, just be smart about it. When you have those days that you want to give up, the only thing that I, I'm telling you is that use, you know, your brain just a little bit to, again, use those tools. So use that book, use that music, use that person, call that person if you can. Go and read some stuff, get inspiration because trust me, the day after you'll change your mind. You're like, okay, I'm back up. You were just tired. Like what made it so, like you were telling me where you're like, I was perfectly happy with what I was doing. Like things were cool, but I just like, I had to go do this. Like what is it do you think that made it about like making drums and finding this and getting into it that you're like, 
I can't picture myself doing anything else with, with my life than this thing. Like I have to do it. I honestly couldn't tell you why, because it made a lot more sense. If I had stayed at that company for just another year, that company was purchased by, uh, by a much larger company and every employee got a massive payout and got to keep their jobs. Oh, <laughs> Massive payout. Yeah. I could have started this business with a ton of money and really done it right. But I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there at all. I felt called to do something else and I had to do that. Yeah. I just couldn't be there, you know? Well, it, it, was, it was straight gut feeling and nothing else. Yeah. What makes you have to do this over any other thing? What makes it so that this is a thing that you have to do? I just want to live a happy life, you know? And I couldn't do the nine to five. I, I don't know. I mean, I know so many people who are in construction and my dad, my grandfather, my uncle, like my whole family's in construction. And my dad even said like a year ago, like, hey. And then even the last couple of weeks, he's been like, I'm so proud of you, bud. Like seeing all the stuff that you're doing with this music stuff, like it's really cool and it's really amazing. So oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, just got to stay on it. That's the hard part. What made you pursue this, these things, these two businesses that you're doing? What made it so that like, these are the things that you have to do versus any other thing that you could be doing with your time and money? Um, that's a, a pretty easy question. Basically, I chose the two things that I find the greatest happiness in. So if you think about everything you do in life, what brings you the most joy for me? You know, when I do a design that really impresses someone and we just have that, when we're looking at each other, we have that smile, like it's like a shared connection, like, hell yeah, look what we just did. Um, right. So, and it really doesn't get much better than that. Um, and same with painting. Part of it is, um, you know, making the customer happy. But another part is it for me, it's also kind of a form of meditation. That's oh, awesome, um, like dude. Get in a, a good headspace. I just listen to podcasts all day long, crank out some walls. And I always say, what made you pursue this thing as, it, as your passion? Like, what made it so that the thing that you do right now is the thing that you did the five months of like grind for? Like, why is this the thing? What is it about this? So, I had a guy give me a call last year. And he said, Steph, I got to tell you something. Um, he said, when your assistant called me to set up a time for us to chat, I didn't tell her this, but I was looking at a spreadsheet trying to figure out how I could liquidate my assets and shut the business down. Oh. He said, when we got on the phone, you asked me, what's your 10-year plan for this business? And all I could think of was, don't admit to this chick you're trying to shut this thing down. Okay. And he said, and you convinced me to buy into this program and start coaching with you. And he goes, and now I truly legitimately have a clockwork business that runs without me and generates profits without me that I get to live off of and I get to take advantage of. And I can't thank you enough for that. Like that's, that's why I got into this because I know there's people out there who hate their life and hate their business and their business sucks and their employees hate working for them yeah. because they're God. so miserable that they make their employees miserable too. They just and you spend it. 66% of your life at work. It shouldn't suck. That's why I did this. What made you pursue this as your passion? So what made it so that for you, you're like, this is the yes that I have to say versus the other no's. This is the one thing that I need to do. Why is that the uh, one thing? Like, well, I think it depends on what we're applying it to. But being an entrepreneur, um, I think that I saw that I am an advocate and a cheerleader for people. And so it really related well to being able to go out and champion other people's events, um, their causes. And um, now in this new role as speaker facilitator, um, it, I get to be that, that excited about, about the people. Um, and so I think that yeah. that's one of the biggest things. 
what made you choose what you're doing? Um, it could even be what you're representing in the podcast, even to be the thing that you have to do. Like out of all the things that you could do in the world, why is this the thing that you adamantly are like, I need to be an audio engineer. I need to have this podcast. Like what made that mean that to you? Well, I'm going to give you two answers, one for the audio thing and one for the podcast. Perfect. Uh, As far as audio, long story short, I always thought I wanted to just tour for the rest of my life and do tour management or front of house for a band or whatever. And then I met a girl and realized that I'd much rather be at home and spend time with her than be on the road for three quarters of the year. And got out of the music business for a year and a half and then started interning at this awesome studio in San Diego called Signature Sound, which I am going to name drop now. The Used recorded there way back in the day. Blink-182 recorded there. More recently, um, Kill Switch Engage came in with their side project. I can't remember the name of it. But I remember walking in one, in one day and seeing uh, cases with KSE on it. I'm like, I think that stands for Kill Switch Engage. And then the dudes from Kill Switch Engage walked in. I'm like, yep, okay, that's Kill Switch Engage is here today, like right now. Like, Okay. And then you start. And um, so, long story short, that other job that I was in, my hours got cut because they had budget issues. So, I was like, okay, and jumped into doing audio. And it's been a blast. So, I, I really enjoy that. And it's just something I like. And I never thought I would like studio work, but I do. So, now I do mixing and mastering f- uh, through that side of my business, which is called Pinnacle Pro Sound. And then with the Better Band Bureau, you know, working with bands, I saw how many artists have no clue what they're doing. And I do not mean that in a bad way because how are they supposed to know if no one's ever educated them, if no one's told them like, hey, have you tried this? So that's the Better Band Bureau. I basically just saw that artists could use some help from somebody who knows what they're talking about. And that's why I got Matt and Aaron to be on the podcast because I'm not going to lie, they have much more experience of being in a band than I do. I have experience in the music industry and doing lots of stuff like logistics and all that. I can plan a tour out and route it and all that. I can do that really well, but I don't have the experience of actually doing that in a band. I just have the experience of doing it in general, either in support of friends bands. And that's kind of another thing that got me into it is I always had friends hitting me up being like, Hey, do you know the music business? How do I do this? So instead of having 20 people, you know, every month hit me up asking questions. Now I can just be like, yo, dude, we did a podcast episode all about that. So you can hear me talk about it for an hour with people who are in bands rather than me just like typing up a quick response that right. took me two minutes to write because I don't have time to write back to everyone. So right. <laughs> it's kind of long story short. It also just was people who were not bugging me with questions, but just asking a bunch of questions and they all asked the same questions. I said, hey, you know what, we got to put this down on the record and get it out there. First question being, and it's kind of difficult just because you do, you're doing so many different things, you know, but it's, it's what made you pursue what you're doing? Why is this the thing that, that you, you have to do that you chose to do over any other thing that you could be doing? Because I mean, eventually you just make a ton of money and you realize that you can just wake up in the morning and just do whatever you want. And so you have to ask yourself, like, what would you be doing if you made no money from it and you were just set for life? Like, what would you do if you didn't make any money from it? And so whatever you would do for that, then that's what I would start doing. That's what I do. What made it so that you had to do this? Why is this the thing that you woke up in the morning still thinking about? Why is this the thing that you have to do? Why why this over anything else? Why this over going to be the auto mechanic and and working at that shop? Why does this have to happen? Why is this you? Because we're built to do. We are not built. We're actually raised and brought up to to not pursue the things we want to pursue, we're supposed to pursue what's practical in the moment and we're supposed to be set up. We're supposed to know. So high school, like middle school prepares you for high school, high school prepares you for college, college prepares you for Mm. job, job prepares you for retirement. I don't know. I don't like that um, model. I think it's really stupid. I don't think nobody is telling us that you can actually create a life that's different. 
And uh, I'm not saying that I did that, but I'm, I think I'm on track to. Um, but that's probably I think that's really the, the why why I'm doing it, too. I'm also doing it for the people that just won't do it um, because somebody has to, <laughs> you know, like live like this, you know. Um, and I want to convince them that it's possible <laughs> um, and to not get just stuck in the monotony of things. Like you were said, you were working that job you hated. Like, shit, man, I've been there, too. And I don't want to do that. I just got like I will go. I'll have zero dollars like 10 times in my life as many times as I have to, you know, to continue like pursuing my passion. What made it so that what you're doing right now, this is a thing that you feel like you, you have to do. Like, why is this worth, you know, seven months of building something, you know, from scratch? Why is this the thing that you need to wake up and do every day? Oh, well, that's a, that's a great question. You know, I, I spent, years being in a band. I, like I said, I made good money in IT, but I just found myself, I had a career, I had a, a, a college degree, I was making use of it, but I'm just working 40, 50 hours just to take my paycheck. And I would throw basically my whole paycheck at just like my band and my career pursuits for music. And uh, I knew that maybe being like a famous rock star was going to be a bit of a tough sell. And that's like not the easiest uh, one to get, but I, I just knew that I wanted to do something in music and that I wasn't feeling fulfilled and I didn't know what it was going to be. You know, I thought maybe I'd, I ended up touring in some way, either as the band or as, as some sort of a part of a tour crew or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, uh, once I saw the opportunity, I just went for it. Um, the biggest thing that made it happen was my two partners, Tyler and Kyle. Um, their drive, um, is the biggest part of it. And I, if I was just, if I had stumbled upon that space by myself and just been given the keys to that on my own, it wouldn't be anything. It would still just be an empty mill building. It might be less dirty, but it would just, it would just be what I was doing. I would just be doing demos and writing my own shit and just like doing pre-production for bands um, instead of having like a full recording studio with, with that, that we built up, like the, the whole drive of it happened with us coming together, especially with Tyler. Tyler always had aspirations to open a recording studio, which is ironic because now I'm the sound engineer and he's the, the video. <laughs> but, but he was the one that was just like, dude, we got to like, we got to do it. And every time it was like, it came time to like, okay, we're going to snake some connections in, or we're going to, we're going to build this or we're going to, connect that he was the one that was just like okay well let's sit down let's open google let's spend three hours learning everything we need to do and let's do it fucking right like let's let's do it even if it's hard and and there's a lot of things you don't understand at first you're like i don't know anything about this dude i've never built this i've never created that i've never recorded that i don't know how any of this works well i don't know i didn't know what phase was when i fucking started this i wasn't an engineer but i decided to be and so we just pushed each other and uh the three of us all pushed each other to just be great we called each other i'm just like hey i think that we could do even better with this and uh without those two other guys that i would not be i'd be sitting in a a big empty room just like playing the drums by myself what what made it so that i know that your parents kind of gave you a nudge and said hey this would be a fucking cool thing for you to do but what made it so you're like, you know what? I'm going to sit there for 12 hours and plan out bathroom breaks to make this happen. Why is this a thing for you that you are going to go through everything that you're putting in for, for effort and time to do this? Why, why for you? The fact that I enjoy doing it is huge. This is something that I want to do. You know, it's that old self-help cliche of like, do what you love and, you know, um, money or f- will follow or whatever. I, my my th- th- amendment to that is, you know, sort of find the meeting place of doing what you love and w- what is uh, worthwhile doing, you know, as far as, you know, if it's a job, you know, find the meeting place between what is fun and also makes money if it, you know, um, or it, maybe it's, uh, bring your community get together in some way, you know, as soon as I started seeing this, uh, the way this could impact a lot of people in a positive way, right. uh, I, it, I didn't really 
there is no lack of motivation after that point. Right. Yeah. What is it that made it so that what you are doing right now is the thing that you need to do over any other thing that you could possibly do? Like, why is this stuff your mission right now? What, what makes what you're doing the thing that you need to wake up and go do every single day? This is a great question. <laughs> um, when I was a little girl, when I was six years old, I had this newspaper called the Parent Street News. And I like compiled all of the neighborhood stories into a newspaper and then like hand wrote them all and went and delivered them (laughs) first. Yeah. So the purpose of that newspaper was to create a community within the neighborhood. Right. And bring us all together as neighbors. This desire has just been inside me since I was like a little kid. And I hope that answers your question, but it's like something it's just that constant tapping on my shoulder that I can't make go away. With what you're doing right now, Gio, in terms of working with these artists and working with these creatives and and what you're doing, why is it that you chose to do, you know, you move when you were 20, you face all these adversities. Why did you, why is the thing that you do right now, the thing that you had to do to overcome all of those things, put all of this time in. Why is this the one thing that you have to do? Because something told me that it was. Hmm. There was never a question. I've never had a backup plan. Wow. And I don't think anyone should. That my personal opinion, I don't think anyone should. If you can, if you can create a backup plan for yourself, then you might question whether it's the right decision. Hmm. That's powerful man what made you pursue these arts or it could be the podcast if you want but i think arts just because it's been longer ingrained in a root in your life Mm. why is this the thing that you had to do in the third grade or however old you were like why is this the thing that you decided i now need to make every aspect of my life to be this thing for the rest of my life against we were just talking earlier you love football or you love whatever you love, whatever it could have been. There's a million options. Why is this the one thing? It gives me joy. And I don't, I don't know what else could make me happier. Fair. I mean, I, I, I just love making. And when I was a kid, I would collaborate with others. So it was probably a bonding experience. Um, And I found that the more that you worked at something, the better you were. And I also found that it was a great emotional release. It was a great way to process emotions. Mm -hmm. I lost my father when I was 10 years old. And, uh, you know, when you have a death of a parent when you're in elementary school they make you do counseling with the you know uh guidance counselor and i had a i had a they she gave me a block of clay to work with and i and there wasn't any assignment it was just here's this yeah and i mean it, it was i was definitely making art prior to that loss but i think that processing that kind of thing definitely you know on a subliminal level, I don't think I was a 10 year old kid realizing this is how I can art therapy, you know, <laughs> but, you yeah. know, looking back, I see what was happening. You know, I was able to get stuff out and I am like uh, a hypersensitive, like I see something on TV and I feel it, whether a character is embarrassed or scared or uh, really sad. Like it takes me that, you know, that much to cry. Like I just, wow. I, I feel incredible. Like, I feel a little too much sometimes and uh, yeah. you know, whether it's processing my own stuff or just feeling in general uh, from all over art helps me uh, translate that, you know, and, and it, it just makes me happy and I feel proud when I do it. Like I feel I've accomplished something. I've produced something and perhaps it won't be, you know, a Greek statue that lives there for the test of time, but especially with digital. I mean, I feel like, 
after I'm gone, some of the stuff I made somewhere will exist. And that's kind of, you know, after it all is a nice thought too. So I'm going to change it up. I'm really sorry that I'm going to do this to you, but I'm going to change up a question that I usually ask in my five, just because I asked myself this other day and it kind of slapped me a little bit. So Uh sorry, not, not out of a, not out of a anger to you just because. Uh Oh, what is, what do you feel like you have to do before you die? (gasps) Oh, um, what has to happen? The first thing that came to mind and you told me to say the first thing that came to mind was have babies. And I felt really silly about that, but you should not. Um, (laughs) uh, I want to buy a house. I I don't know how like boring and I would like to buy a house and have babies and uh, like white picket fence, you know, like that is as lame and vanilla as it gets, but that's just a fact. (laughs) What made it so that this path or the things that you're doing, why is this the thing that you have to get out of bed and do every day versus any other thing that you could, could do in the world right now? Like, why is this the thing that you have to do? Uh, well, um, I think it's just like how a dancer has to dance or how a cook has to cook. Um, I'm like, I've always been like, a, for as nerdy as analytical as I am, I think I've always been sort of like an emotional guy. Uh, just, just below the surface, you know, <laughs> and um, I can't let on. Uh, but uh, music uh, has been the backbone of so every last important moment of my life. And uh, I'm not getting too weird or deep, um, you know, a lot of us don't have the best starting points. And I really came to cherish. And, and kind of need art and need music. And, and music really is my art. Like I can't fucking draw or paint. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do that. I, I can't, Lord, let my wife tell me I cannot dance. I can't do any of that. But, um, you know, I can. You're not alone. Uh, yeah, right. I, I would imagine many of the listeners are probably on my side on that one. But I, um, uh, I, I love, I just love music. And so when I look at, I could go maybe get a job somewhere. I could take a paycheck. I could do all of that. And that might at times have been a little bit safer, but I think it's more scary to do what I know won't fulfill me. I I would much rather wake up and strive and try because dude, it's the journey. Like, you know, without being too much of a, a boasty, a braggart here, you know, like we did well, I did well musically with my band and stuff. So like I got to hang out with Davey from AFI and I, I got to play enormous stages and I, I played France and I, I played Russia and I, you know, I did all of this crazy stuff and it was good. And but my favorite part of all of it was how exciting it was to get there. And when, when you're there, it's, it's very like, holy shit, I'm here. That, wow. And it is fulfilling in that way, but it's nothing compared to, um, nothing compared to just the, the, I don't want to say pain, but the, just the challenges that are involved in, in, in figuring it out are, are just like rewarding every day, even if it can be frustrating at times. Um, and so I think I'll probably in some sense do that forever. And that's why I would probably be a depressed, miserable, you know what, if I chose the other path. What made you decide that out of any other thing that you could do when you wake up in the morning, why is this stuff that you're doing, why is this the stuff that you just had to do or have to do now? What makes it the thing? Because of the energy of being around creative people. It just makes me feel like I'm alive. Every day. What makes it so that this is the thing that you have to do every day instead of any other thing? Like why? out of the time that you have like 5,200 weeks, a hundred years or less, is this the thing that you have to do to spend your time over any other thing that you could do in life? Uh, I think, I think seeing the end result makes it all worth it. I think just the, the, the way that it comes together, the creative process, it, it makes work not feel like work. And I think that's how it should be. You should always enjoy it. 
why is it that the things that you're doing right now, why are these the things that you wake up every day to do instead of any other thing that you could possibly do like for your life? Like, why do you have to wake up and do this every day? Why would you not go do anything else? Like, why is this the thing? I think I'm a natural maker personality. I just like, I love and have a drive to create and that's what drives me is the the constant um goals of what i'm trying to create in that moment whether it's for myself or for a client but i i love creating why is this the one thing that you have to do versus any other thing that you could wake up to do for your life i, I think i think i think i said it before is regret so i i can't handle knowing the fact that i could be Really, to the point where I can't physically do it and have regret that I'm going to die is the thing. What, like you said that you've spent over half your life doing this as a career, doing this in in a pursuit. What made it so that like when you wake up every day out of any possible thing that you could possibly do on the planet, why is this the thing that you have to do? Like, why is this the thing that had to be half your life or more? So when I was younger... I never wanted, not that I didn't want to do it, um, but I had the dream like any musician does when they first start out, like you want to be in in a famous band, call it what it is. The older I got and the more we toured, the more I realized I didn't like being away from home all that much. Like, I like traveling. I like going, you know, seeing the country, whatever. But my, my desires turned from playing on a stage to wanting to be like behind the desk and doing it that way. And I think a huge part of that is ever since I was a kid, I was a, I was a problem solver. Like I love puzzles. I have to fix things. I used to take stuff apart all the time and like try to figure out how it worked and why it worked and how to put it back together. And doing this is a giant puzzle with so many pieces. And that like satisfies something in me that I have to do. So I I think that's the biggest part of it. Mm. And also making my own schedule is so sick. You can't beat that. What made it so that out of anything that you were going to do, why, what is this? Why is this the thing that you have to do when you wake up in the morning versus any other thing that you did in your life? Like, why is this the thing that you have to do? I mean, I guess like, it's just what really makes us happy not having at least for me not having a routine like a job that I have to go clock in and clock out of every day now I'm able to wake up in the morning and just you know to make my coffee take my time like just work on stuff that is that truly brings joy and value to my life yeah. um and I'm able to you know start my own business now um which I've yeah. like had in the back of my head for years like I wanted to get to that point but it just I never saw it actually possible um so working on that and you know just doing stuff that's actually gonna continue to bring me joy in the future Mm. um rather than just keep working these jobs that just to pay the bills yeah um yeah just in all obviously living against the status quo I feel like that's the first step to really doing um what you want yeah, because everyone's gonna doubt you, and when you're when people are doubting you, that's when you know you're doing something yes. right. Say it all the time. Yeah. When you're right. scared, or uh-huh. people are doubting what you're doing, or they're like, "You're fucking crazy." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right, cool, good, you're good, like, good. Yeah. great." I'm gonna keep I'm gonna, doing. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, oh, like, yeah. Oh, great. That was encouragement. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep going. All right, great. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what made it so that? when you wake up every day that these are the things that you have to do over anything else that you could possibly do in the world? Like, why are these the things that you have to do? Oof, that's a good question. Anything else? You have so many. It's not even something that I have to think about. It's just kind of there. It's just the things that I've developed over time. Like I've been drumming since I was a kid. Like it's just there. It's something that I love real estate. It's just, always been there too, where it offers that long-term financial security. And I having that long-term mindset is kind of the thing that I've always done my whole life. And then construction, being raised in a construction household, it kind of, it's, it's something that's like innate, which means like it's in your being. 
And it's not even like decisions I'm making. It's just there. Yeah. That answers your question. Yeah. It's really, yeah. Yeah, cool. dude. That answers it. What makes it so that the things that you're doing right now with the band, the content, everything that you're up to, why is this what you do every single day? Why is this what you wake up to do versus any other thing that you could do? Uh, literally the most fulfillment. Like this is what I feel most fulfilled doing and just feel like it's my true purpose in life is playing guitar, writing metal, making music with my friends, you know, making cool content that I can look back on someday. So you just made that sound so much more simple. I feel like than a lot of people try to make it. Yep. I mean, that's the real reason. Kind of just got to look inwards and figure out what makes you truly happy at the end of the day. And that's why is this the thing that you need to do every day instead of any other thing that you could wake up and do on the planet? Why is this the thing? Well, I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. I, I, I know it sounds so cliche, but I love getting up in the morning and going to work and I love coming up with the ideas. I just love the whole process. I love the people I work with. I, I just can't even think of anything else. That's awesome. That I'd rather do. What makes it so that this is the thing that you wake up and do every day of your life versus any other thing that you could wake up and do on the planet? Why is this the thing that you have to do? Um, uh, it's, this sounds, uh, I don't want this to sound like a it, cop it can, out. It can sound I, cop out of your cliche. Yeah, Sometimes that means something, to, dude. I have to do this. Like I have to draw. I have to paint. I have to. And when I say that, I mean like when I go a certain amount of time without doing that, yeah. I kind of become a weird person. Like I, I'm kind of <laughs> get a little like, I'm not, it's like, it's like hangry. You know what I mean? Like you're just not really the most <laughs> pleasant person to be around. Like people so, are like, walking like, down the street past you and you're, and you're like, mm. yeah, it's just like, he hasn't painted in a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's been such a, it's been something painting and creating and expressing myself visually has been just a part of my life for as far as I can remember. You know, even before getting obsessed with the graffiti thing, I always drew what was in my comics. I, I, you know, drew cartoons. I was drawing things for friends. It's just how I know how to express myself. Yeah. And it's also kind of my moment of meditation in a lot of ways where it's like, I'm able to kind of zone in and in so many different ways, kind of, either have a moment to myself or to kind of think um, outside of what I'm doing. If it's just kind of like the filling in motions or just kind of like doing the visual math of figuring out what needs to go where in order to make, uh, you know, design make sense. So it's, I, it's so ingrained in who I am as a person that at this point, if I don't do it, I get weird. So like, so it's, this is, this is why I had to kind of, I had to choose this because I, you know, I, I was in the corporate job and I'm sitting there drawing like in between all my meetings. And it's like, I, I have to, this is, this is everything. This was going to take over at some point. So. Sure. And that's why is this the thing that you wake up and do every day instead of any other thing that you could possibly do on this planet? Why is this the thing that you wake up and do? It's my childhood dream come to life, man. This is everything I've wanted to do. It's all I've ever dreamed of is building communities and helping people. And now I have the opportunity to do that without restriction because I get to control it, but right. it's, creativity unleashed it's uh super challenging and stimulating um and it's just a deep 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 passion so that's why 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 do you wake up and do what you do every day versus any other thing you could wake up and do because it brings me a level of self-fulfillment that not only feeds my ego but it feels feeds me spiritually mentally keeps me sharp keeps me young that's why i do it what makes it so that this is the thing that you do 
every day instead of any other thing. Like, why do you wake up and do this versus any other thing you could possibly do in the world? There's a million things that you could do. Why is this the thing that you have to do? Um, I know it sounds cliche, but I, I love it. Like there is, besides being with my daughter and my family, there is nothing more than I want to do than to go and take pictures and create art. And there's times that I get creative blocks, but on those days that I just, I try to find something new to go take a picture of. And I think that I really need it mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else at this moment. And I don't think I would want to be doing anything else in the future because the nature of photography makes me happy, makes my soul happy, my heart happy. The portrait photography, like to see the joy on the people's faces or to get the feedback about, you know, how, how beautiful I made them feel when they weren't feeling confident. Like it just, yeah. it's awesome. Like there would, there's nothing else I would want to do. What makes it so that this is the thing that you wake up and do every day versus any other thing that you could possibly wake up and do? Like you can literally do anything. You can wake up, and do anything in the planet. Why are you doing this? Well, you know, I'm someone who struggled with addiction and mental health my whole life. So I wanted to be able to give back to the exact people that are in my life every day they're in my life. So I wanted to just be able to give back to those people in a major way. And I think if we could really help the 100 million people plus that are struggling with addiction and mental health, that we can really change the world because they will come out and write those songs. They will come out and start those businesses. They will be some of those people. They just don't even know there's a way. They don't even know there's a way that that's possible. So that's really why I get up in the morning and do what I do is to inspire just one person to realize like, I used to have panic disorder. I used to be a drug addict. I mean, I used to just name it. And so that's not in my life and not in my reality now. So I want to be able to share that with people that wherever you're at, that that's, that is a possibility. There's so many paths to recovery. There's so many paths to recovery. You don't have to choose just one. And, and so if I can, if I can help someone to realize that, that I've, that's, that's why I get up in the morning. Why do you wake up and do the things that you do every day? versus any other thing that you could possibly wake up and do on this world? Like, why is this the thing that you do? Because I love people and I love music. Fair. Is that a good, am I answering, uh, am I understanding your question correctly? Yeah, man. I love it because sometimes people like go and they blast out like this huge thing. And sometimes people answer like you did where it's just like, this is the thing. Yeah, I could elaborate, but that, I mean, it's, it's a huge Huge question, but also very simple. But yeah, I love people and I love music. And those things add up as a whole other conversation, which is maybe where people, you know, do blast into other things. But that for me is what boils down to what feels like a call. Like I just feel like it's a fit. It's what I'm supposed to do. And so therefore it's a bit easy. I just feel like I'm, I'm in my own groove. Dave, why do you wake up and do what you do every day instead of any other thing that you could possibly do in the world? Well, Dave, <laughs> I'm so sorry for this skit. I couldn't think of like any other way to like give you my answer here. So sorry for my sense of humor again. The reason why I do what I do is because I have to. And this feels probably like one of those cop-out answers that I tell people like you're, if they do a short answer, it's not a cop-out answer. Like I, I have to do this. I have to do what I'm working on because I can't picture any other thing happening in my world. And so there's like two parts of it. There's a selfish part where like I have a a expectation of how I want my life to be. I want my, my life and the things that function in my life to be a certain way and to act a certain way for me, my friends and my family in terms of time, in terms of comfort, in terms of ability. But then definitely way past selfish, way past that is, is what, what can I deliver with my talents or abilities to make the greatest impacts on the world in the minimal time that I have to be in that spot and change lives or help people. And I'm, I'm, good at audio and music and I'm good at having these types of discussions and and getting creative with 
with helping people figure things out like this. And so these are the things that I flock to to try to create ways to create some type of impact while I'm here and hopefully leave something, whether it's digital forms like this or whether it's this building that I'm creating to allow other creators to take it over when I'm gone or whatever it may be. I want to create things that allow people to keep creating and create better than me and faster and change any life that I can in that time. So the the short of it is I have to do this. There's no other thing that I could possibly do and there's nothing that could change what I'm doing. And the long answer is that I want to try to do things that I can help with within my abilities and my, my realm of perspective. So that is the why I wake up and do this every day. This is why I'm, I will work seven days a week. I will wake up at six and go to bed at two. It doesn't matter to me as long as these things are happening to achieve that vision. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cap this thing out here and then we'll get out of here. But I didn't want to not answer that after I've slammed that question, which is a really hard question to so many people. I wanted to answer that. So hopefully my answer compares to some of these awesome ones. All right, guys, that's going to conclude episode 100 of the Waking Up From Work podcast. I hope that this was really valuable for you listening to it in this context. I think it's something that you probably don't hear very often to have people answer one question over time over multiple creative careers and entrepreneurship in one spot right here. So I'm going to be listening to this episode myself. I haven't listened through it all in one run. So I'm even excited for my own episode, which is really lame. So I hope it was valuable to you. We're going to be continuing the show. I'm going to be doing new things, creating new things for you, making things interesting. We're going to be carrying on with interviews right away with John MacArthur on the next episode live. We're going to be hanging out with more artists, creatives, and entrepreneurs sharing through my build process of my creative space and and updating you on where I'm at in the journey. But we've got a lot more to do here and I'm really excited for it. If you want to keep up with us every Thursday night on Instagram at Dave Wake Up, we've been going live. I'm also going to be expanding onto other platforms like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and things like that with some multi-streaming sites. So you can hang out with us live when the episodes are being shot. Or you can obviously keep listening right here where you're listening on any podcast platform. If you want to keep up with me at Dave Wake Up on TikTok, Clubhouse, Instagram, Twitter, pretty much any social media, if you hit up at Dave Wake Up, feel free to drop me a message. Tell me what you're up to. Let me know what you think of these episodes. Let me know what you want me to look up or interview or figure out. And I would love to hear from you guys. It's always a pleasure to chat with you on there. And then, If you want to hang out on our websites, wakingupfromwork.com, crawlspaceaudio.com, those are our two sites showing the show itself and then the audio work that I do. And last is if you want to keep up with our exact build and the studio and Airbnb and all this random crap that I'm working on, specifically, we have the Wake Up Property series that my wife and I, Megan, have been putting out on YouTube every other Friday, and we will be consistent there too. So Lots of places to keep up with me or my wife specifically. Lots of places to keep up with the podcasts and the guests. And uh, once again, thank you guys so much for listening to the show. If you're getting value from it, I haven't said this in forever, but it just kind of reminded me to. If you're getting value from it, we would love if you left us a review right here and let us know how we're doing. Uh, Those reviews do a lot to help us spread the word. If you're liking or subscribing or sharing or any of these things and any of these platforms that I just mentioned, all that is a free way that you can really help us out just to spread the word and show us that you are digging what we're doing. And uh, if you want to support the show at all, we have merch. We're going to be completely revamping that and coming out with like a total merch line that's way more than merch. It's really going to be a clothing line that will support the show as well as uh, Patreon and some offerings there. You can hit up on the links below. But thank you guys, one million, for supporting the show and hanging out with us. And I'm not stopping now, so I look forward to connecting with you and, uh, and going after it in the future. All right, go hustle, go do it, go do what you want to do.
and figure out why you want to wake up every single day. Thank you. Thank you.